It's a whole new world through your TV set, but at what price? Samsung and Panasonic have started selling 3D TVs in the US this week, with New Zealand and Australian retailers set to follow suit over the next few months. But a quick price check reveals that seeing it in 3D will cost you. The TV sets alone will cost several hundred dollars more than an equivalent high-definition 2D TV. And it's not just the set that needs upgrading. By the time you're able to see Avatar or Alice in Wonderland at home, you'll need a Blu-ray player to watch it on, not to mention special cables and glasses, which could cost anything up to $600 US, we're told, for a family of four. So will it all be worth it? Joining us now on the line from Sydney is Ruslan Kogan, who runs online TV retailer Kogan Technologies across the ditch. Ruslan, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jim. How are you? Nice of you to join us. Thank well, you. there are a lot of TV, TV watchers uh, and consumers and retailers excited about 3D. What do you think? Will it take off? Um, well, the technology definitely has a lot of potential, but I think that a few people have jumped on the bandwagon just slightly too quickly without you know, looking at all the issues involved here. Um, price is obviously, as you said, you know, one one big issue with 3D TV. So the TV sets are going to cost a lot more money than all the accessories you need to buy for them, such as you mentioned a Blu-ray player. It's even a special 3D Blu-ray player that's required, and you need all special types of cabling and things like that. And then headsets as well. You said, well, for a family of four, it's about 600 US. But, you know, what if you want to have a mate round for dinner and then to watch a movie as well? Does that mean someone in your family has to opt out of watching of watching the movie so there's there's a lot of issues that need to be looked at with costs on that side but you know you can look at it from the other perspective as well and you know there's other costs involved because to produce a 3d movie or a film requires twice the cameras which requires more people on set and obviously raises the production cost and someone's got to pay for that so You know, does that mean that our ad breaks are going to go from three minutes to six minutes if you want to watch a 3D show and view double the ads? Or, you know, is PTV going to charge double for those shows? You know, there's that sort of cost involved as well, which people aren't really thinking about or taking into account. Yes, that's fairly inexorable logic, actually. That's hard to deny. And there are issues, I suppose, of camera compatibility for broadcasters as well as you know as well as having all the extra exactly, cameras. Exactly, yeah. So they need updated cameras and things like that. So there's a lot of there's a lot of extra cost involved in actually producing all that three D content as well. Russell and Kogan is with us. Samsung uh, have unveiled their US pricing, Russell and uh, th- the cheapest set is going out for seventeen seventeen hundred US. But you know, you're paying a lot more than that as well. Are those the sorts of prices you're expecting for the Australasian rollout? Yeah, from what from what I've seen, it is significantly more expensive than even the LED technology, the you know, the thin TVs that are out at the moment. Um, so yeah, it, it is it is quite a bit more expensive from what I've seen. And it'll be more expensive by the same percentage in Australia and New Zealand as well. So we would expect that to be similar. The only thing is at the moment it's you know the content as well. Where are people going to get the content to play on this TV? And unless you've plugged all the right things into it and you've done it all correctly, you're not you're not going to get 3D TV yet. No, OK. You mentioned the mate coming round. You've raised a really good point. I mean, would you want to sit with your mates watching the league on a Saturday or watching Bathurst or with a whole lot of funny glasses on? Exactly. You know, that's the... As well as the cost, there haven't been many people talking about the social effects of this 3D TV. So sitting around, you know, having having a few beers with some mates and watching a sporting event on, I just at this stage cannot picture that happening while we're all wearing our 3D headsets. Um, and, you know, 
there's yeah, it, it's it's obviously an issue. And when you look at communication and you know what part in communicating between people, body language and eye contact plays, you're taking eye contact out of that whole thing, which is you know you talk to someone, you look them in the eyes. It's part of communication. So we're just going to be staring at each other through our 3D headsets. So I think there's <laughs> there's definite there's definite social ramifications as well. And and you know if you yeah, it's it's you know you see that cliched scene where two teenagers are sitting on the couch and the guy makes a move on a girl. It's you know the first bit of that scene will be well. Do you think it's time to take off our three D glasses? <laughs> That's right. Uh, and also with the glasses on, I presume it makes the other lights in the room and other things in the room look funny. Yeah, I couldn't tell you that for mm. sure. I do know that I have read some uh, research papers saying that it can mess with your perception as yeah. well. So I'm very into my tennis. So that's something that, you know, I'd think twice about having a tennis game scheduled for after I've just watched a 3D movie. But there were, <laughs> I've read some articles as well that say that, well, there's a recommended time for which you shouldn't drive after watching 3D TV. Because yeah, I imagine of that possibility that it can mess with your perception. Yes, I imagine you know we fit and those, those Wii games uh, in three D would be quite a challenge. Uh, can yeah, I? Well, yep. No, I was just going to say the bottom line. I suppose uh, will Kogan Technologies sell them, Ruslan? Oh well, Kogan Technologies is about servicing demand. So if that's what the customers want, if that's what they're requesting, then yes, we we would definitely. Uh, sell a 3D TV. My comments on it so far just relate to well, I think we're jumping on it a bit too quickly, and we've got to we've got to look at a few issues first to then see um, see how it progresses. But also, Kogan's got a very educated customer base, so they're the sort of customers that before they buy anything would Google it and research and things like research it and things like that. So, so you think most retailers jumping on the bandwagon this quickly? Do you think most retailers in this neck of the woods will be the same. Do you think it's quite good that we're having to wait, that we're not jumping in like the Americans are? Uh, yeah, definitely. Just to see, the well, what are the effects of this technology and, you know, give it time to work out, well, exactly who's going to pay for it. Gotcha. You know, if, we, if production of this TV show is going to cost twice as much, how are we going to pay for it? Are we going to charge the advertisers twice as much to advertise or are we going to show six-minute ad breaks rather than three-minute ad breaks and things like that? So the technology is definitely, you know, there is something to it and I've heard a lot of great feedback from people that watched Avatar. But, yeah, we just got to understand those other elements and say, well, you know, who's going to pay for it? Where's the content going to come from? Because the other thing is people in America buying these sets now, what have they got to show on them? Yeah, exactly. You know, there's hardly any content available. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it is working to our advantage to a degree because we're letting other markets work all of those things out and then we'll get to decide, well, is there actually value for consumers and is this something consumers want before we jump on board? Thank you for talking to us about that, Russell, and I appreciate you coming on afternoons. Uh, hey, thanks a lot, Jim. That's Russell Kogan, who's an online TV retailer across the ditch in Australia.